Hi dear ones, I hope you're all well and loving yourselves unconditionally every single day. Today I would like to speak to you about dating yourself and having a relationship with yourself. And so many people don't really understand that what that means. What loving yourself unconditionally, deeply, wholly, solely actually means. When we're single, we long for the feeling that that first love brings. We'll drive past or we'll walk past couples who are just looking into each other's eyes and who are so loving and affectionate with each other. And we'll long for that. And then when we're in a relationship that is difficult, we still long for that. So what is the common denominator here? A relationship with ourselves. And very often, I actually suggest to date yourself. So how on earth does that work? Well, first of all, go on a date with yourself. And that means taking yourself out to your favorite restaurant, ordering yourself the bottle of wine that you like. Please don't drink and drive now. <laughs> but it's about actually taking yourself out and doing with yourself the things that you would hope somebody who absolutely worshiped the ground you walked on would do for you. And that includes writing yourself a love letter, even a juicy love letter. Don't wait to be worshipped. Write that letter to yourself about how much you would like to do things to you that make you feel absolutely loved and appreciated. Very often when we're in that first phase of a relationship, we find ourselves writing those love letters, telling the other person what we love so much about them. And then we look forward to receiving that in return, what they love so much about us and what they'd like to do with us, to us, and what your future would like to be. So write yourself that love letter. And instead of just writing it and leaving it there, do yourself a favor and write that love letter and put it in the mail, post it, because there's nothing better than getting a letter that's marked with your name on it and in the letter is all these wonderful things about how you're appreciated and worshipped and understood and accepted exactly as you are for who you are. Everything that you wish somebody else would do for you, make that list. Make that list of what you would like somebody else to do for you and empower yourself in that way. What things would make you feel incredible? What things would you like to do that you're just waiting on that partner in order for you to do? Don't wait. Wear that perfume because you love the way you smell. What other things could you do for yourself that would empower you? You could perhaps take a class that you've always wanted to take. Maybe it's an art class or a pottery class or a sewing class. Take that class and don't wait for somebody else to give you that permission in order to, to do that for yourself. Give yourself the opportunity to empower yourself. Remind yourself that you can do anything you want to, anything. Give yourself this love and support so you have it when you most need it as well. Everything that you wish somebody else would do for you, what would empower you most? What would you need to feel when you are most needing empowerment? When you're most needing to stand strong in your power? Like when you need to say no. You don't need to get permission from somebody else to say no. You don't need permission from somebody else to perhaps cut off a relationship that's been bleeding you dry of energy. Um, or when you have to make a tough financial decision, those empowering things are long lasting and they allow you to be stronger and to stand stronger in your power. And therefore, when you realize how precious your power is, that you don't just give it away as if it were something that you had completely in abundance, 
because our power, yes, we do have it in abundance, but what we give is what we receive. And when we give out and it's not received by others, it's not going to come back to us. And that's very true of so much energy. If you're just giving and giving and giving and it's going out into the ether, it's being dissipated. But when you're giving and it's being received, it will return to you because that is how that cycle works. Commit to yourself, wholly and solely. Commit to yourself, be all in for yourself. Just like when you're in a relationship where you throw caution to the wind and you commit completely to this relationship and you're all in. It's important to commit to yourself, going above and beyond the commitment that you would give in a relationship to give to yourself. The secret, however, is to maintain that commitment to yourself within the relationship too. Just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean that you'd self-deprecate and you put yourself backwards and you no longer commit to yourself. In a relationship, it is even more important to commit to yourself and to know yourself and understand yourself and how you react to having a partner in your space, in your life. Empowering yourself is also holding out for the right person and not just the next person because you're lonely. When you date yourself and you love yourself, you enjoy your own company. You don't mind spending an entire weekend with just yourself because you love yourself so much that it's an opportunity to love yourself even more and to give yourself the things that you most need. And normally we expect that of others. Now, when we don't understand ourselves, we expect others to fulfill needs within us. And then what we're doing is we're setting the other people up for failure. Because if we don't know how to satisfy ourselves, then we're definitely not going to be able to show somebody else how to satisfy us. So it's important not to expect somebody else to satisfy your needs because only you can truly satisfy your own needs to the extent that you need to satisfy. And then we can stop setting anybody else up for failure because whatever they give us then is a bonus. So we need to satisfy, that's why this shadow work is so important and understanding the chakras and understanding where all of our stuff comes from and how we bring it out into the light. Look at it, feel that it's, it's okay because it's part of us, dealing with the things and making the changes that we need to. But more than that, committing to ourselves and being able, that shadow self of ours, that is the critic, that is the judge, that is the scolder constantly in our heads and in our minds. It's there because it's not feeling any love. So love yourself and all the facets of the diamond that is you. Every shadow, and when you love and reassure that part of you, it will love you too. Believe that you are happier single than miserably coupled. And I think that's very, very important. So many people hanker after having a relationship with somebody else because they just want someone in their life. And the universe then just gives them someone, <laughs> not the one or the right one, or the person who holds space for you to be yourself authentically as you are, because that's what a relationship really is. It's not actually about compromise. It's about holding the space for that person to be themselves. If they've got crazy beliefs that you don't agree with, then maybe it's not for you, that particular relationship with that person. Holding space for somebody and having a relationship with them means that you allow them to be completely and authentically themselves. You allow them to commit to their own dreams and you don't expect them to change their dreams in order to fit in with your idea of them, of their role in your life or of the dreams you're supposed to share. Let that sink in. Being in a relationship with yourself is the most important. When you are in a relationship with somebody else, the relationship with yourself doesn't fall away. 
It needs to be nurtured just as much. Your shadow self needs to be nurtured and reassured and told that it's loved just as much as when you are single. And if your partner does not allow you the space to do that, then unfortunately there is a little bit of an issue. If you feel caged in any way or not allowed to be spend time with your friends, to be and believe. Let's say for instance, you love to do yoga and you love to meditate, but your partner doesn't allow you the space to do that. You are basically squashing a round peg into a square hole. There's either gonna be back gaps and in other places, there's going to be too tight squeezes. It's not going to work. Dating yourself is a lifelong relationship. Imagining your future as detailed and as loving as you do when you fantasize about your own fairy tale with somebody else is so very important. It's time, dear ones, to give yourself all of the love, support, affection and dedication that you would to somebody else should you be in a relationship with them. So look at the relationship you have with yourself. Make it count. <laughs> Above all else, make sure that you're impeccable with your word when you speak to yourself. Don't make any assumptions about what you think you know. Find it out. Don't take anything personally. Anybody else's stuff is their stuff and is only a reflection of them. And just do your best. And of course, dear ones, just for today, do not worry. For the universe has your back when you worry. You send out worry energy and only more stuff to worry about is going to come back to you. Just for today, do not anger. For you give your energy to that thing. And if you're so angry about it, why are you giving your energy to something that you're so angry about? Feel it, deal with it, and let it go. Just for today, work honestly and hard on yourself. And do your work with integrity. Just for today, be grateful for everything that you have because sending out that gratitude energy brings back more for you to be grateful for. And just for today, be kind to all living things. Even Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. All living things. Much love. <laughs>